you need to focus on what is, not what should be. What is the biggest complaint junglers have when they come out of a game? Oh, I got my laners ahead and they fed. Oh look, my laners are inting, I couldn't do anything. Well, what if I told you that there was a very simple fix for allowing your laners to get themselves fed, win their lane, and not int in the process, thereby allowing you to control the map and do what you do best, carry games. With this ganking and pathing optimization fix, when combined with the other two to three strategies I will present in the examples, you should be able to carry any game for the rest of the season to reach your rank goals, whether you're a ganking jungler, farming jungler, herbivore jungler, nunu jungler, shako jungler, it doesn't matter, and as such need to be fixed in order for you to become the total jungler I know you can be. I have put my live jungle companion guide on Zarda, GG, and tailored it to over 30 junglers. That's almost every single jungler. This includes my patented ganking tier list, my game plan maker, what jungle routes you should go for your champion. It tells you what I would do in any given scenario in the early, mid, and late game. I'll throw a dynamic pop out on your screen where you can control whatever you want to see or don't see, including all of Zarda's in-game information, which you can of course tailor to your preferences and move wherever you like on the screen. How nice. Along with the specific best routes, best items, and best runes for your champion, the Jungle Life Companion Guides on Zarda GG by Vrakayu is your best way to improve and get better. With more than 8,000 players and 46,000 games played on my Zarda GG Guides, I trust them to get you where you want to be. And also stay ahead of the curve by the time Season 13 arrives as I will update them frequently. So get your goals by the end of Season 12 and exceed them in Season 13 with a link in the description below. In this first example, we're going to have a look at what this Hecarim does to affect his bottom lane in such a negative way. And the simple fix starts off with the Hecarim simply doing a full clear. Standard, boring, not that exciting. Enemy jungler starts topside, could be doing this, could be doing this, could be sequencing down. Probably it's a grave, so who the hell knows? What we're gonna do is focus on our own game plan here. However, what does a typical farming jungler wanna do? Full clear down and then gank and get a scuttle. And of course the lane is a Santa vs. Caitlyn pushing a Maokai vs. Kaiser. If you expect it otherwise, you're not very good at laning or assessing champion strengths and weaknesses. Range advantage is pretty big, and here comes Hecarim outside of the gates, moving, ghosting, eing, he's knocking up, he's gonna knock back, towards his bot lane, he's going in here, they're able to kill the Caitlyn. Pause. What do you think about that gank? What do you think about that gank? Good or bad? You know, that's straight up regular stuff. The bot lane disrespects the fact that he started top, he's sequencing down. They disrespected the fact that they were going to auto push without thinking about the wave state and how to control it. And he's level 4 ganking a level 2 lane at 323. That's exactly the advantage you're looking for as a full clearing farming jungler. And now before we look at the rest of the gank, let's look at this. Look where the Maokai is. He just did not recognize that the Hecarim was coming, which is why I tell you to ping three times. You're coming to gank, ping three times so that they know so they can act on this. Now the Hecarim... After the kill on the Caitlyn, look what he does. Chases down the Senna, gives her doubles, and now he's spamping in the Maokai saying your flash is available and your ignite is available. You can see that over there. And then I went on a long-winded rant that had nothing to do with the example, so I'm interjecting here to say that while most Maokais are starting Q and going into W, there are still some EQ Maokais running around, especially if you want to do level 1s, ward buffs to protect against invades like this Maokai did for you. So use your F keys to track what abilities that Maokai is using, and basically level 3 guarantees a free kill with a Maokai, so you've got to think about the levels of your laners when you want to gank, and in isolation just dying and over committing here when your laner is a bit of a potato, that doesn't look so bad. But at the end of the day, you control yourself. You got the Caitlyn kill, you can see the Maokai is lagging a bit in the brain. Don't chase the center for some random principle that doesn't really help you at all win the game. And we will discuss this more later in the video in a more in-depth example from the same player. But just to build on the sort of dying to your laner and giving double buffs instead of cutting out when you already have a good gank, look at this Nidalee example where she basically does an equally evil sin. She's gonna go back to the top lane, but stop, hold, pause, look, what do we see? Count the minions. You can do it. Is this a gank you really want to see through to fruition? We're approaching the 530 wave mark. We're approaching the point where level 6 will be reached. The Jax sees the Nidalee coming. Like, what's the Mundo going to do here? She's attacking him in a fully juiced wave. Flash death. Flash death. This loses lanes, my friends. This loses lanes. All the time... I play a lot of Ornn top 2 when I'm just feeling not like I want to play jungle. And obviously I'm not the best laner when I'm playing Ornn, I kind of just chill. I'm good at Ornn, just not at laning. I kind of just chill and play the wing con, do good macro plays. But junglers who just walk into super waves and cannon waves and die. Why? Don't do it. So thankfully my Discord decided to give me the IGN of this guy and I decided to follow him around a little bit to see what other games he had. There's a couple streaks the other day and this is what happened too. We had our bot lane here going for trade patterns 2v2. Now you've got an Ash versus a Sona. Very interesting lane with a Zyra in there. Again, level 2 trades are not the best for Zyra. They're not really the best for anybody uh, unless you have that chain CC. But look at this. Look what's happening. 
Whether this should happen or not is totally irrelevant. So many people ask me, yeah, but what about the matchups? What should I expect to happen? What can happen? No, no, that's the wrong question. Stop it. It doesn't matter if the Lucian Zyra should straight up destroy these two 2v2. Two two. You're talking about a diamond game. Yes, they're in the top 1%. Yes, they're in the top 1.5%. But the problem is, you know, if the enemy bot lane or Smurfers are just better players who are destined for Master Plus, they will win this 2v2 anyway. It doesn't matter. You need to play what is, not what should be according to a theory book when looking at matchups in a vacuum. It doesn't matter if Set should destroy Renekton or Renekton should destroy Set. The better player here will end up winning that matchup. And that's the key thing. So the Hecarim here, look at what he's doing. He's just finished red. Look at this lane. What should he be doing right now? He should be ganking in this lane. This is an example counter to the Senna Caitlyn example because here, this makes sense. Everyone is super, super low. You could just run at them, kill them. The enemy jungler is a Belveth, got leashed bottom side and is going up. We know this, we tracked this, we saw this. In this case, well, you guys didn't, but I can show you highlighted footage maybe. We know that the bottom lane leashed, which means in this particular case, the Hecarim's whole advantage of starting top side is only seen to fruition by actually punishing the lane he's pathing towards. If forcing the set to leash when the Renekton doesn't means that the Renekton wins the lane, then he sacrifices top lane. He needs to go ahead and impact his bottom lane. You follow me here. This needs to be a double kill for him. What does he do? Ah, uh, yes. Krugs first. This time, I think Krugs first. Hmm. And now look. Should the Lucian just base? Yes. Should the Zyra just base? Yep. But the problem is, look at the lane. Look at the minions. You don't need to know much about wave management to see. Right. Blue cannon. Whole bunch of blues pushing in. Horrific position, right? When you have the position here cross, that's not a position you want. That's not a very gankable lane. It's not a very good lane when your lane is are counted. They're being frozen against. They're being zoned out. This line here is crucial. We want to we want to avoid it as much as possible. So here comes Hecarim. What do you think he should do now? At the very least, just try, and then you can decompress the wave. But again, no sums, no sums. Flash available, no sums. You have one flash advantage. You should be able to see this because while you're clearing, you should be looking using your F keys at the lane here. Go ahead, run at them, and if you get nothing, you will get something. You're definitely at least a dead Sona. You will be able to at least kill them, push the wave, Lucian can reset, now you can do crab because you know that Belveth is on the top side. You know she's on the top side because she started bottom side with a leash. Right, let's have a look at what he does. Set kills Renekton, so that's good. You know, again, Renekton didn't have to leash, Set did. Set does the damage and gets the kill. Katarina dies to the Karthus. Cool coin flipping in my direction. All you have to do is kill this. The enemy team is demoralized. You're in, you're in silver, one gold. Whole enemy team is demoralized. Now, it doesn't matter what happens here. Look, they're trying to just, just help them push out the wave so it crashes so that they can reset and come back with a small itemization advantage. That's all you had to do. Now, the Belveth goes mid lane to kill Karthus. He's going to show up here and kill the Belveth, which, of course, in context of this play, this is fine. Now what is he doing? Recognizing, look, she's a 24 CS, that's 5 plus crab. I can go ahead and steal the Krugs. Although, now that I think about it, this doesn't look... See, I, I, sp I sped run it just to make sure I had a point to talk about, but when I sped run it, it didn't look so bad. Now in real time, you're like, wow, this is actually pretty damn horrific. He avoids the vision, but... Oh, look! We try to flash in, to turn it, and we died. Now, what's Lucian gonna do? Like, the, the guy's like... Please, they should have just reset and cut their losses. Like, this, I 100% understand you from a jungle point of view. You know, I play lane two, I try and avoid inting as much as possible, but the best thing you can do is straight up avoid the death here, give up a few CSs, come back fully healed, and now you can do damage. Now we feed the Belveth, they're fed, and your bottom lane is completely screwed because you decided to do this instead. But what happens, fortunately, for the Hecarim, is he goes to the sequence down, the Belveth now attacks top side. The Zyra and the Lucian are going to turn this, turn this fight into their advantage here. But obviously, ooh, he survives too. Very good. So the Hecarim is winning in terms of the, the, the mid and the top lane in terms of like getting those kills and those leads. Here we go. We're going to hit that root. We're going to go all in. We have the exhaust used by the Lucian. We have the Ignite running. We're going to focus down the Ash together. Chain, 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 damage, death. And now, of course, the minion wave is coming. So you want to kind of detach from that. If you're the Zyra, careful. Don't get too greedy. All right, because you know I play Zyra too. So I get really into watching <laughs> Zyra's play support. And now we're going to do this. And we're going to get a free dragon. We're going to chase that down. There we go. So kill on Sona. Look, Katarina goes into the... This game should be over. It should be absolutely over because he won the coin flip. But as you can see, even though he won the coin flip, and this should be a case of, hey, I've won the game as a jungler. If you have these lanes that are doing this without your impact, you should be happy. Look at this. He's going back to base. He's just watching. This is something that I have a very severe problem with with junglers, and it's something I focus on myself. Now, obviously, the, the support is looking to make a play here. This guy's caught up with an Ashold. Now he's a 2v1. 
Why is this even remotely happening? If you're the Hecarim, you see the Belveth here, you see your movement down here, you can see the trap is developing. We have spells to use. Let's combine with the Zyra to kill someone. And then you have a 3v2 against their uh, the ADs in support and you can get the kills and make sure you win the game 100%. This is the beginning of a long drawn out throw. The first game, the Hecarim kind of forsaked his bottom lane by inting doubles. The second game, he completely missed what is and thought about what should be. But why are you finishing the Krugs there, sequencing to the top side, doing Krugs and letting the enemy jungler gank first? It just shouldn't happen. Okay, so we have a very compromised first gank where he decides to in double buffs to the center, even though he had success. Well timed, well executed, got a kill. All he had to do was back off push, let them reset. He gets crab, go mid lane, take top crab, gank top lane, reset, resequence, pretty straightforward. Second one, we decided to make a big mistake by missing an overly free gank instead of just getting a double kill or at least one kill and help me defreeze your bottom lane you could have easily moved on up to the top crab or you could have just done the top crab and come down it doesn't really matter but ideally why drive by finish your clear make the gank happen this one the same zyra and the same hecarim but i wanted to follow him around a little bit because it was very interesting to see so many different kinds of ganking mistakes all within like a four or five game stretch but we decide here to gank the bottom lane super early but it's a lucian karma all right with a lot of mobility which means you need what? CC. What does Zyra not have at level 3? CC. So what you need to focus on from a jungler's perspective, right, 100% is at what level do they want a gank? For example, if you want to gank a lane that's level 2 that has no stun but level 3 has a stun, do something else to sync up for that gank when it's more free. Why would you waste your time going to a lane that has no CC when you're gonna need it against a highly mobile lane matchup? The issue with this also is you're against the Kane who started topside and is coming on down as well. If you wanted to kind of chill a little bit or at least set up a counter gank, it's better to finish the full clear and then try something once everyone's level 3. You can kind of fight over the crab or you can just gank this while the cane does the crab, you have that advantage. By showing up now, you're forcing your bot lane to kind of follow you. Should they follow you? Probably not. But at the same time, the cane is going to see this. The cane is going to react to this as a good jungler should. Normally he just wanted to keep clearing. But if he sees this, he sees level 2 people, level 3 junglers who haven't even full cleared, He's going to rotate down. And obviously here we're going to have a situation where we're going to go ahead. A little bit of a tilt flash. Everybody dies. Chain, 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 chain. No damage, no damage. Aphelios is like, uh-oh. Now we've got the same exact situation where he's going to have to push this out himself and reset. And now he's got an issue where a cane could just repeat gank very, very easily knowing that the cane had 12 CS plus a red buff. Took this crab. We'll fall back to this. Your bot lane is now overextended, overexposed. Cane can come on down. You fall him back to this. The bot lane is completely destroyed. The bot lane is completely destroyed. And despite all of that, right, we're gonna have here a great example of recovering the lane once more, but instead of them doing it by themselves, they're gonna need the jungler's interaction. A good E, Ignite, use, Hecarim's gonna dive the back lane, knock back the Lucian, we're gonna try and kill him very quickly. The Kane shows up, it doesn't really matter, we can kill the Karma as well. The Aphelios, the Zyra, and the Hecarim are gonna try and kill the Kane as best they can. And what happens if, nice root, what happens if this happens? Hey, push pushes the wave, reset, equalize, normalize, and fixed. The mistakes that happened early can now be fixed. All right, the bottom lane have an advantage, the little manalists, they can simply get a plate and go back to base. The Hecarim though is forcing a dragon with no HP, no mana, he has not scanned the area, and most likely you will note that the bottom lane here with a plate have offset the lead that the enemy bottom lane has, should just go ahead and spend it. If you don't scan this, if you don't have the resources, this is an absolute giga giga grief play. Look at this. If you look at six minutes in the game, you have to track the respawn timers. Look at this. It's so obvious. You know, none of them should be here. But this is the Hecarim makes his play. He makes his call. If you don't go ahead and do this, your bot lane is not going to go and do it. Your bot lane is not going to walk after taking a plate and try and solo this if you don't take it. You can just take this, maybe counter jungle, run away, do this, do this, and then sync up with your bot lane, kill them, and now you can do it again. Right? So the best play for the Hecarim was just to snack, snack if possible. Run around, maybe gank mid lane, boof, boof. His bot lane resets, spends gold, gets to the lane, gank it again, shove it, and now we can do it. Forcing a dragon when your team isn't ready to do a dragon is what causes you to throw leads even more than terrible ganks. Don't do this. So there you have it, some good discussion about lane states, ganking even points, when to react, when to not overcommit, but something that even junglers who are smurfing, and then these were smurfing accounts, fail to account for due to their own ego. So it's not always your lane is straight up inting as much as you potentially not allowing them to see their own win conditions to fruition by messing up the lane in such a way they can't play the game to the degree they need to in order to help you carry. Think about these things in your future games. And remember, if you want to understand the best way to get 9,000 gold at 14 minutes, the video in the top right, that's going to help you with that.